Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. Get a delay. So, all of those effects are controlled by these two macros. The main one is just moving a whole bunch of crap at once, and this other one is moving most of the primary parameters that are like a bit a big swath. The, the main motion on most of the primary parameters, which in this case are all of the units and settings, and uh, some of the main uh, table settings, um, they, they're very small and specific. But if I want to have large tone changes, like in between notes and stuff, um, I can just make a macro too. That's just like the center position of all of this. And I can just pick around, pick and choose moment to moment what my character is like. So let's briefly go over uh, the whole list here, and then we'll work backwards to see how sounds made sounds. So in the beginning, we have a wavetable. It is one of the factory wavetables called Drink the Juice. I, I didn't go very far to find this one. Like I don't have to try super hard to get really cool things out of this plugin. Um, after this, we have the format uh, scaler and the, the list of spectral changes and the bend going on in here. But here's the kicker about all of this. We have seven voices of unison, and in the advanced tab, these, these parameters let you spread the unison voicing for that parameter. So you see up here, there's four little lines. Um, why is there only four? I wonder if that's just uh, huh? But well, however many there are supposed to be, uh, I wonder if that's just a representation of the visual. Let's see if I go wider. It's weird. I wonder if it actually is just four. Either way, though, the whole point is that it changes the, the parameters value per voice spread around the center, and you can choose the spread, you know, either way. And I'm actually automating these value these values. Um, just setting them at all does really cool things, and you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to what this thing sounded like before these were set. But um, moving them around was just extra awesome. And it's not so much that some plugins don't let you do this; is that usually when you do, it's, it's kind of devastating. And this plugin handles how well it like I'm on I'm on the whole thing. Like as I I mostly just wanted to see what would happen if I tried just doing everything at the highest oversampling rate. And it's it's barely touching the CPU, which isn't saying all that much now for my computer because my computer's getting aged. Um, moving, uh, yeah, let's keep going though. So over here next we have these filters. So the filters, if you're just familiar with just filters in general, again aren't too much to like freak out about. But what's to freak out about is how many different things, like just how dense with modulation this is. Um, a you have a this resonance switch. So this is something I'm automating. And what's cool about this is that it'll change the resonance from the positive polarity to the opposite polarity. And I'm automating through it. You just watch it while it's doing it. So the phaser is like folding. And that, like, that's just a really neat thing to have. It. Like, that's technically something that's true in most other plugins. Like, some plugins have that as well. This one is, uh, this one is like a blend from top to bottom. This one is the cutoff position. I think this is the main one, yeah. And I have all like the macros uh, touching just about every little bit. Um, and then over here we have the flanger spreader. So this is the, the comb. This is one of the low high ones. And uh, then I went to the, the band spread flanger because that's kind of fun. And it is a lot of fun. And a lot of the same other parameters are built in here. Yeah, and, and plus, plus the mix, plus different routings. It's very, very dense with options. And I, I dig that out of it. Uh, after, the, after the filters, uh, in here we have a delay out module. So something else that other like delay modules, even built in ones tend to be weird when you automate certain parameters, but this one didn't seem to care. Um, it also just lets you, and it has, it has this built in filter spread that just basically assumes, uh, that it's not going to be full spectrum, which frankly is the right call. If you spread it all the way out, like you could tell there's a beginning and an end. If you leave it in the middle, it's kind of like beyond the ends there but if if we were trying to be perfect about it we would just not have a filter because we wouldn't want we wanted delays to be real but that, that that's real enough and for the most part we don't want the delays to be real um in this case i'm actually using it to uh straight up automate it and you can see the mix is incredibly low and this is because it's before distortion and also just has everything being modulated at once with a built-in post filter that also just has a built-in blend knob. Not a selection for different filter types, just a blend knob. So of course I automated that. And I put it post because I'm mostly just tearing up this. 
then the multi-band filter with also just a very impressive methodology of interaction. Um, you have the up, the literally up down filters or compressors rather a thing that controls for how much like it gets pushed up, like below it and the thing that like how far it gets pushed down. And so you, you, you very get a, a pretty much like the best kind of visual identification of what you're going to do to your bands. And then within them is how you change the ratio. Isn't that neat? Look at a little visual for how that works out. That's just, that's just super cool. Um, I didn't bother automating in here. Or did I? Yes, I did. I automated the band down. The mid band. Uh, I got a little hot is all. And to reduce mud, I just, you just kind of do, it's basically like putting a big notch filter at the end. It's kind of whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, but do it with a multi-band compressor. Yeah. So let's turn all this off and hear what some of this stuff sounds like before all this happened. So here's without compression. <laughs> without delay and now we just have the kind of the main bunch these two the two filter types well they're more or less the same filter with just different kinds of like i guess they're not technically the same filter are they the same no they are they're bands with just different kinds of uh filters for open like, openings um although this one's resonance didn't seem to work the same way like this one has a has a actual sharpness to it whereas this one was a polarity i think that's the difference between combs and flangers yeah i'm gonna get really used to that um but here's what they sound like without the filters yeah the majority of the tone of this entire thing is actually just from this oscillator and i only put these filters on to kind of wash it out a bit um, and then through distortion, you, you notice this is something that's pretty killer about this, uh, plugin. Let's put this back for a second. You hear how there's moments where it's actually still sharp, where despite being seven voices of unison, only 2% spread, and, but still 10% phase randomness. And with these giant filters on, we still get the sort of sharpness that you'd want out of something that has the squelched variety out of here but it doesn't there's, there's a lot of techniques to do this that tend to have like consequences and most of those consequences mean that you don't actually get how cool the texture is that you're doing the stuff like when you do anything other than the squelch but this survives it quite well and it has to do with like the phase relationship of defect we're doing a wavetable to get like the core uh modulation to do things and this is just being texture <laughs> Because you can hear it be, like, squelchy all day. And the fact that this only takes away so much of it is because this is so very rigidly a wavetable kind of life. Except for when... Oh, that's right. I haven't set the button now. So the other one. Different types of options show up here depending on what kind of whatever you have going on here. So um, now when we have the, the voices of unison, uh, these are the ones that, like, activate the fact that these are here. But if I take off the unison, now it's just what this is. <laughs> which is still pretty neat because there's still automation happening between here. Uh, this is actually not being macroed. This is uh, connected to the note just so that when I play a higher note, it doesn't do that like sample tuning thing. It has act it does feel like an actual like talky thingy thing as opposed to uh, the digital fakery sometimes. Uh, it's a kind of light touch, but uh, for the most part, that, that seems to work out. Um, after, yeah, so... Mostly when I was designing this, it was kind of pick a thing, pick a place to be with it. And then, then I got, I knew I was going to get into the unison. Uh, I knew that because I know like, it's just everything I care about, about most of these plugins is just how well they integrate the unison. And this is like just the beginning. I haven't even tried to do some of the funner, like different pitchings or whatnot, but instantly. <laughs> Now, does that not have a particular quality to you? Doesn't that kind of sound like what FM does? Even though we are not doing FM, we are we have the bend on, which kind of sounds like FM at high enough values, but we're not doing it that hard. And we know what it sounds like without the unison on. And if only the unison changes, uh, what about it is, is doing that up? 
Well, a big one is that this spread is pretty huge, so we are getting a whole bunch of uh, bend values kind of in there. But the real kind of kicker is that the fact that we're spreading this is basically what FM does. You could think of like the middle one being the sort of normal voice, and then there's sidebands. That's basically what FM seeks to accomplish. It's a kind of a, a blurring of a particular frequency um, so that it feels like it's spread as opposed to it's sharp. And that's also just what this primer does in general, but that's also like why it comes out like that uh, when you do things like move the, the wavetable position in uh, unison space. Because then that, that feels like you're you're blurring the kind of line together. But because it's phase aligned and it's the same sound, it does the squelch uh, even harder, along with the bend. that's how hard you have to push the bend and get to do that just by itself. And I'm keeping it near the middle there because I, I wanted to kind of mitigate that result. But what's neat now is that I, we have this, we have the usual problem when you do this without this exact like tool where you could do a unison in one or the other, but you'll have like the wrong blend of the textures. And right now we're getting the best of both worlds. We're getting the kind of softer midi uh, middle or toners things that don't have as much sharpness. And we're getting those outlier two sharp ones that could only be fine if they were the only ones. And that combination is getting us the whole thing. And unlike a broken layer, it's all sourced from the same element all at once, and all the modulation is all together, and all the macros. Ah, it's just so good to have all of this all at once. One of the best, just the best things about this plugin is how just so dense for modulation it is. And I've, I've barely like just begun to get complex. <laughs> And then it's about picking notes and moving around with the automation. What's neat about the, this is the macro two setting. And I have mostly setting it on the uh, hold line type so that when I move it around, it's still just a stable uh, single setting, but it does, it is fun when it moves every once in a while, but it is a lot when it moves because it's basically the macro, but way wider um, on the table. Uh, it's just so that you could basically be your own variation in real time. And uh, sort of same deal with actually how you heard how some of these moments had delay and others didn't. <laughs> What that is, is that the macro's bottom end turns off the mix on the delay. So there's moments where if I feel like it, I can choose to allow the delay to be alive when the note's not, or even on the other notes, and then I can also not do that. Oh, I can't really choose if it's not be on other notes. It's, if it's on a note, it's on the other note. <laughs> It's important, like, the important part of this as a macro construct is that it shuts up at the bottom. That's really it. Kind of like a guitar solo. As long as it begins and ends on the right note, chances are whatever goes on in the middle will be seen as a success. Anywho, this preset will be available to download in the description of this video. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.